In this video, I talk about the main features of the Quick Smart Literacy Program for schools. So really, I'm just going to be addressing questions like, what is Quick Smart Literacy? Who is it for? How does it work? How well does it work? And uh, what you need to do to get started. Just a little bit of background. So um, you're all here because you are aware that Quick Smart is a learning intervention program that's designed for students who struggle with literacy or numeracy. We target the middle years in particular. So those students from about years five to year nine. The original program was developed by the research team at UNE and that has been led by Professor John Pegg, who is the director of SIMA, and Professor Lorraine Graham. And the original research was around bridging that gap in performance between students in the metropolitan areas and the regional and remote schools. The program has always had a research base and we currently expand that work to apply what we know about the brain and um, how students learn, drawing on research from education and neuroscience. So QuickSmart has been implemented in schools since 2001 and over 72,000 students have actually demonstrated substantial learning gains as a result of the numeracy and literacy programs. So um, I mentioned it's a small group intervention program. So if you're familiar with the response to intervention framework, QuickSmart sits at tier two. So when you identify um, ways to address the needs of your students in the school, Tier one would be those best practices based on research that you might deliver to the whole class. Tier two would be a standardized, targeted small group instruction using a validated um, intervention program. So with QuickSmart, the small group consists of a pair of students working with one instructor. And then tier three is where the student might need more intensive or individualized intervention, um, and that might include some of your students with um, diagnosed specific learning difficulties. So QuickSmart kind of sits in the middle there. The program aims to improve students' automatic processing of basic information. And in literacy, it's things like um, word recognition, so that the working memory can be freed up uh, to concentrate on more complex tasks like comprehension and reading to learn. We want to help students to actively engage and participate in their normal classrooms um, and build a solid foundation for further classroom instruction. So the idea is not simply to just withdraw students and keep them in a program isolated from what they're doing in the normal classroom. Eventually, um, as students make some progress in QuickSmart, what we want to do is to help them build those links and transfer the learning from the QuickSmart situation back into their regular classrooms. Another aim is to then enable students to perform at levels comparable with their average achieving peers on statewide or standardized tests. So who is QuickSmart for? Well, we target students in the middle years, especially from years five to year nine. And those are the students who have persistent difficulties with literacy, those who are performing below the national minimum standards on um, various tests. So when we think of NAPLAN, we're looking at these two proficiency levels in particular. So those who need additional support, and then some of those who are still developing towards those um, minimum expectations could also benefit from Quick Smart. If you're thinking about um, other kinds of tests, for example, the ACER PAT tests, 
which are standardized norm reference tests, we're looking at roughly the bottom 30%. So in terms of the PADAR stay nines, we're looking at um, stay nines one to three for quick smart. So if you think of stay nine five as being your average achieving students for the year, you've got stay nine four, where you have some students who may benefit from group work in class, um, and then stay nines one, two, and three. These are the students who would benefit from a withdrawal situation where you're working with a more intensive kind of intervention. Now I've got a question mark next to stay nine one, because some of those students in the lowest 10% may need a different kind of program. So depending on what their learning difficulties may be, they may benefit from Quick Smart or they may need something that's more intensive. Just on that note, although Quick Smart hasn't been designed specifically for students with specific learning difficulties, we have had reports from schools of using Quick Smart successfully uh, with students with behavioural difficulties. We've even had um, students who are studying in an animal assisted learning facility. Uh, we have students who come through the hospital system um, who have been included in Quick Smart programs. So the program has been adapted for use outside of what we originally designed Quick Smart to be used for. But you need to keep in mind that the expectations for the kind of learning gains that we report are probably not really realistic for these non-targeted groups. However, it doesn't mean that the students can't um, improve their learning with an adapted version of Quick Smart. All right, so who ends up in um, our Quick Smart lessons? If you have a look at this matrix, it's based on a theory of the simple view of reading, which says that reading uh, comprises of word recognition or decoding and language or reading comprehension. So if you look at this quadrant in the bottom left-hand corner, we'll often have students in Quick Smart with poor word decoding and poor comprehension. Uh, sometimes we have students with quite good decoding skills, but poor comprehension. Other times we have students who have poor word decoding skills, right? There may be some gaps in their learning somewhere along the line, but their comprehension is not that problematic. And then in some circumstances, we have students who come to us who actually have quite good word decoding skills and good comprehension skills, but for some reason, they don't perform as well as you would expect on um, various tests. So in those cases, it could be low self-esteem, it could be a lack of confidence, it could be that they just need more practice at some of the skills that Quick Smart might offer to bring them up to that sort of average um, performance level. So we do get a mix in our programs. Now, when it comes to the program structure, Quick Smart is about providing a structure which allows students to progress and experience success in small steps. So the Literacy program and the numeracy program um, are both structured around 30 minute lessons three times a week for around 30 weeks. So you're looking at around 90 lessons per year. Students work in pairs for lessons with the same instructor, as I mentioned earlier, and our instructors, coordinators and teachers complete 36 hours of professional learning in the form of three two-day workshops across a year. The program features four levels in Quick Smart Literacy, three different lesson types. And I believe this is a, a difference with the numeracy, which has one lesson type. The components in the lessons are done in a set order. 
So we have a set structure and a set sequence. Um, and then within that structure, there is flexibility. There's ongoing assessment, formative assessment, which provides feedback on learning using a built-in online tool, which we call the Quick Smart Basic Skills Assessor. And uh, you'll hear QBSA thrown around a lot as the abbreviation for that. And feedback is two-way in that we get information about students' performance they get that so that they know where they can improve, what they need to work on. And that also helps the instructors to decide, well, what is it that they are going to target in the students' learning? So really the um, instruction in QuickSmart seeks to individualize learning for students to meet their individual learning needs, even though you're working in those pairs. So in Quick Smart Literacy, we determine where the student starts uh, with the QBSA, so that um, online test. And there are four instructional levels in Quick Smart Literacy. So essential words is um, the lowest level where we do a lot of intensive work on those um, most frequently occurring words in the English language that we expect students to encounter in the um, primary years of schooling. And then we move through level one, level two and level three. So to determine where students start, they work through a number of tests or all of the tests in sequence as far as they can go without undue stress. And then we use that data from the test results to decide where we're going to start the students. The lesson structures, you can see there are three different lesson formats. Quick Smart Literacy lessons are based on learning the vocabulary around a selected text. And we have the text graded according to the different levels in QuickSmart. So in the introductory lessons, when you start off QuickSmart, this is where you're going to introduce the text to the students. You're going to do a model reading of the text. You introduce the most important words they need to understand the text, and that's the focus words. And then um, you'll introduce the flashcards. So the flashcards will be a set of cards that we provide in our kit, which have all of the focus words on them. Um, and then students can practice using those flashcards. Then you can see once you've introduced that lesson, we move to a basic lesson format. And so this is the format that you'll use mostly with your students. And um, so you'll do repeat lessons of these, of the basic lesson for maybe two to three weeks, depending on how quickly the students progress. You'll work with the selected text, work through the focus words, you'll give students explicit strategies for analyzing words and attacking unknown words through the word study. There's the flashcards for practice, repeated reading to develop reading fluency. And then component five is where you'll use the QBSA or the inbuilt assessment tool to see how students are progressing. So you've got a number of ways to gauge student progress in these five minute components. So it's quick and um, focused learning to keep students engaged and motivated and also to make sure that they don't experience cognitive overload. We're only asking them to focus on a task for five minutes at a time. And then we finish off those basic lessons with um, an interactive game just to consolidate learning in a fun way. The third lesson format is the comprehension lesson. And we move on to this when students can automatically recognize the words, the focus words, and know their meanings, and when they can read the text fluently. So this is when the focus of instruction moves to providing students with comprehension strategies that they can then use in approaching different kinds of texts, different sorts of questions, that they might need to answer. 
So uh, that's the third uh, lesson structure. And that's another difference from the numeracy program. All right, so uh, you might be wondering, well, do we cover those big five or big six components of reading instruction? Uh, we know that from research over the last 20 years that there are some essential components to reading instruction. So phonemic awareness, phonics, um, vocabulary, fluency, comprehension, and we add to that oral language uh, because it provides that bridge between spoken and written language. So in QuickSmart, the program is not a standalone phonics program, okay? We do address gaps in students, phonemic awareness and phonics, and we are able to identify whether students have gaps in learning in those areas through the QBSA when we do those initial assessments. And so if there are gaps there and if the students are suited to QuickSmart, then we target those gaps in learning through the word study. So QuickSmart really focuses on developing and expanding students' vocabulary and their fluency in reading. We know that the research says that vocabulary is one of the main predictors of comprehension. So students need to know about 90 to 95% of the vocabulary in a text in order to comprehend it at a satisfactory level. So if you keep that figure in mind, we're aiming in QuickSmart for automaticity and accuracy in um, being able to recognize words and their meanings. The lesson activities provide deliberate practice so that students get spaced practice. So we don't have a two-hour block where students are drilling away. We have one lesson, which is only 30 minutes, three times a week. So you've got a break between each lesson and the practice they get with recognizing their words, doing the repeated reading to develop fluency, and to practice strategies for comprehending text. That kind of structuring is deliberate and it's based on recent research around what contributes to an effective reading intervention. So the texts provide a meaningful context in which to develop the skills and strategies for reading. So students are not just doing um, rote learning and mindless drills and, and repetition. Got that connection with a meaningful text for comprehension. Uh, the other thing to note about QuickSmart Literacy is that it provides a framework which can be applied to any text. So as you become familiar with the program, and students become more familiar with the program, you can start to work together with the classroom teacher to decide on texts that might be suitable for students to work on outside of the classroom while they're doing um, work with it inside the classroom and then target the learning more specifically in that way. So along with the program, uh, we have the literacy resources, which comprise the material or physical kit, which looks like what's in the picture there. <laughs> um, we also, so there's the resources and organization folder, which has all of the materials that you need for your students. Also guides for using the materials. Um, we have a user guide, which is the quick go-to guide for instructors who are implementing Quick Smart. We have a sample student folder. Uh, we like to encourage students to take responsibility for their learning and gradually transfer ownership of their learning from the instructor to the student. So in that um, folder, it's, it makes explicit what students' goals are, what they can expect. It includes sheets which allow students and the instructor to track progress so they can see how they're going. And then online, 
we have a dedicated website which we call the Quick Smart Portal and this is where you can access the QBSA and a whole lot of other resources which we provide for um, our Quick Smart schools. In the physical kit you also receive a set of the PAT R tests, which are the reading tests, the vocabulary and comprehension tests. And a lot of schools already use this. Some schools have moved towards the online versions of this test and, and that's fine as well. So I mentioned the PAT test specifically because over the 20 odd years or so uh, of implementing QuickSmart in schools, these tests have been the ones, the external standardized tests, which have been used as an independent measure of the learning gains and effectiveness of the Quick Smart program. So um, when schools sign up to Quick Smart, the teachers, teacher coordinators and Teachers in the school and executive staff have access to the professional development workshops. So in the first uh, year of implementation, there are three two-day workshops. And in workshop one, you're introduced to the um, theoretical principles of quick smart literacy. You're also introduced to um, the program and how it's implemented. So when you finish workshop one, you actually go away and start implementing the program in your schools. Uh, you come back in workshop two, where you share and exchange um, how it's all gone in your schools with other quick smart schools. Um, and then we extend what you've learned and build on what was discussed in workshop one. And we give you a whole lot of resources and ideas to take away and try after that workshop. And then workshop three, come back and consolidate what you've done and, and exchange again with other schools, what's worked, what hasn't worked and troubleshoot any problems that have arisen. We also offer a quick smart refresher course for people who may have been trained say five years ago and need to be updated on what's new in quick smart. All right, so does it work? When we look at the data that we have gathered over 20 odd years or so, we see a definite pattern and a very consistent set of results. Uh, what I've shown here is the results for last or for 10 years from the HAT results, which are the external standardized tests. You can see that the graphs compare the pre-program means or results on the test with the post. So in each case um, for the vocabulary test and the comprehension test, you can see a significant increase in the scores after the Quick Smart program. When it comes to reporting the effectiveness of the intervention, we use a statistical measure called the effect size. And this is um, based on more than 100,000 studies um, conducted by John Hattie and his colleagues to look at what works in education, what sort of intervention strategies work. So those um, research studies have established that an effect size of 0.4 is what you would expect to be a learning gain if you've got a fairly effective program going on in your classroom. So an effect size of 0.4 would reflect one year's learning gain in a school setting. Now, when we look at the learning gains of quick smart students, the ones who have done the program, we are finding consistently effect sizes of 0.6 to 0.94 depending on um, the year and, and the group and the test. So we've got vocabulary and comprehension. Our results are showing very strong improvements in students' learning and 
this reflects a learning gain of about two to three years within a year of doing the program. So that is pretty significant when you think about it. So it does allow students to catch up with their peers. I should add that that's when the program is implemented in the way it's been designed to be implemented. So for those students who might fall outside of the targeted group, um, those with specific learning difficulties, for example, they might still make some learning gains, but it might be at a slower pace and the gains might not be as great as what we see here, for example. All right. When you purchase the literacy program with the, the um, purchase price, you get professional development, which is even said is three two day workshops over your first year. And you can train up to five staff members at that. And we also strongly encourage you to send a school executive to workshop one, because it's once they get an understanding of the program from workshop one, it's much easier for them to make decisions. And if you need decisions made, um, they have an understanding of the program. So also included in the course is all the physical resources that even mentioned, the flashcard kit, the folders, the, um, the pad tests. Everything that is available as a physical resource is also, there is a digital copy and that's in the QuickSmart portal. So we give you three years of access to all those digital resources and also to the QBSA assessment application. You also get ongoing administration program and IT support. There's a number of discounts available as well so if your school has under 100 total enrollments or if you already have a QuickSmart program or if you have a, a staff member at the school that's already trained in QuickSmart literacy there's a discount.